Well, that's happening to YouTube. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am having a great day. Why? Well, today we're going to be talking about fish. That's why. Yeah, sorry for you plant people, but, you know, I can't always talk about plants. Uh, although I'd like to. But today's going to be fish. And I'm going to be suggesting fish for beginners. Good fish. And warn you about some that you should stay away. I've dealt with a lot of fish. Now, I've gotten into shrimp because I wanted to challenge myself with something more difficult. Um, but most fish in general are pretty easy to deal with. Um, so first, let's talk about what you should stay away from. And I know from experience why this wouldn't, why you won't like this, and the copious amounts of stories I hear from people who run into the same problems. Say no to live bearers, guppies, endlers, mollies, platies. Don't do it. Um, they are easy fish to take care of. And yes, they breed pretty easy too. It's actually more difficult to get them not to breed. Um, so I started off with guppies because they have a wide range of parameters and, you know, they, hard water, soft water, whatever. They, they seem to just, if you read about them, it says they prefer hard water. I, I don't think they care if you put them in toilet water, to be honest with you. They, they just do their thing, and they won't stop. So I'll explain to you a problem that I ran in with when I started, and uh, I started with uh, guppies, endlers, and mollies, and platies. So all four of the no-nos. Uh, they will breed very quickly in a short amount of time, and instinctually when you start, you see the babies, and you're so excited. You're like, yay, babies, i got to save them. And you want to save as many babies as you can. And, you know, you, you see a couple get eaten and then you're like, tears, sad eyes. Oh, God, she ate her own kid. That's, that's a way of things. But um, so instinctively, you want to start saving the babies. And when most people start off, they don't start off with like, you know, three, four, five, six tanks. Just start off with one. And most people don't just start off with like a 60 gallon either. It's typically like a 10 gallon or a five gallon Something that comes in one of those fish tank, you know, kits. Comes with a tank, a heater, uh, pebbles to put at the bottom, a hood light, you know, and a filter and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, a few weeks later, you go out and you spend six bucks on a few guppies. And then guess what happens? Three months later, after your first month, you know, you notice one pregnant and having babies and you save a few and then... Then a couple months later, they get bigger and they have babies. And before you know it, you've got an overstock tank. You've got dozens and dozens of babies you don't know what to do with. And it'll never stop. They will continue to breed out of control. And you will stress out going, oh, my God, i got to get another tank. Or, oh, my God, i got to start selling these fish. And they're not worth anything. You know, um, and I, I have had subs be like, how much are, you know, guppies worried? Can I start selling these? I, I've got so many. Yeah, good luck on that. You know, the $2 fish. You know, uh, the chances of someone choosing your fish over going to, you know, a local fish store, uh, uh, it's unlikely. Um, and I also have uh, a subscriber, I won't mention his name. He had a molly population get out of control, and uh, that was my first experiment. First I had mollies get out of control, and then I had guppies get out of control. And it was stressing him out. He just, he had way too many he could keep up with. He couldn't afford to buy another tank. You know, and you don't just want to start flushing fish. That's not okay either, but there are people that do that. They don't know what to do. And then your local fish store won't take them off your hands either. Uh, you know, so what do you do? Well, he didn't know what to do. So he threw an Oscar fish in there. And within minutes, it ate, you know, 30 plus mollies. And he was like, problem solved. That, you know... That was okay by me. Uh, that's a lot better than, you know, that's nature, but flushing them down the toilet is not the way to go. Uh, so I'm going to suggest beginner-friendly fish that are just as easy to take care of, um, and they won't duplicate like crazy on you and will live several years. Um, uh, and trust me, when you get into the baby thing, you will get sick of it quickly, and it will get old, and you'll start panicking. Uh, so... I'm going to suggest uh, fish that I've personally worked with. I stopped live bears all the way. I still got some guppies in this tank, but I had to do something to make sure that the baby stopped. Um, 
and then for some of you sensitive ears you might not like that but yeah I put a school of carnivores in there to take care of the babies but so let's start off with tetras tetras all of them except for one are great beginner fish they do prefer soft water but they can tolerate mid to high hard water as well you know so if you're not good with understanding water quality and all of that they'll generally do uh, pretty good and uh, when we're done here, I'll show you my Tetra tank. Uh, I have a 40-gallon breeder with uh, four different schools of Tetras in there, and they're awesome. Um, so let's start off with the uh, colorful Tetras, uh, Sarpe Tetras. Um, they were my first set of Tetras that I, I got a couple years ago, and I still have the same school of eight that I had um, when I first got them. And they were alone, so I wanted to add more. And when I saw the varieties of Tetras, I was just drawn to them. You know, a guppy's a guppy. You know, so, some may have different colored tails and all of that, but in general, they all look the same. And plus, they also act like lemmings. It makes no sense. They swim around and bunk into something and then swim in the other direction. It, it, you know, it, it looks like they have no, you know, active thought. It's just they're casually, just nonchalantly living life, you know. But uh, Sarpe Tetras, I'll throw up a picture, but I'm going to show you mine also. Uh, glow light tetras, fantastic. Uh, neon black neon tetras, albino glow light tetras, um, and, uh, and uh, white skirt tetras, black skirt tetras, gold skirt tetras, all fantastic uh, beginner friendly fish, uh, and they're great community fish. They get along with, you know, pretty much anything. You know, uh, when you first buy fish, you typically don't just want like one kind. You, you're drawn to having a variety. Uh, so they do make great community uh, fish. If the one tetra that I will tell you and that I've had personal problems with that are extra sensitive and they're, they're the nano size are, and they're the most popular, cardinal tetras or the neon tetras. Those are the ones that are clear with a uh, blue neon stripe and like a red belly. Those are extremely sensitive. Uh, those have given me a harder time than any fish I've ever dealt with. Another fantastic beginner friendly, and, and you'll love these because they're cute, are pea puffers. Man, they are so cute uh, and adorable to watch. Uh, I'll show you mine. Um, you can't put them in a community. So if you get a 10 gallon, you can put two in there max. Uh, they're extremely territorial, even against each other. I only have two in here, and they they bicker, you know, like an old couple. Um, so whenever I put food in there, I put it on opposite ends, trying to get them to stay away from each other. Um, they don't do so well with certain types of plants because they do like to burrow into the dirt. Uh, but there are some plants that'll work. Besides that, they're just, their eyes, and when they look, they're so interactive. They're so curious. Whenever you go up to the tank, they will swim right up to the tank and make eye contact with you and just... Ah, look at my human. Hey, what's going on, human? Awesome to look at. Uh, I'm going to pause this, show you my pea puffers, show you all my Tetris, and we'll go from there. All right, so here's my Tetra tank. This is a 40-gallon breeder. And uh, let's look at the different varieties I have in here. Uh, so these right here that you see with the orange strip, those are the glow light Tetras. They are gorgeous. If you're drawn to neon tetras, do these instead. Much more hardy. So, and then right here, these uh, the red ones. Those are my Sarpe tetras. Really awesome to look at. Uh, the, these were the ones that I got first, um, and they were in here by themselves. And I started adding more. So, let's look at the albino. These are the albino glow light. Um, my son Alex, he likes to call them zombie fish. You can kind of see why, you know, they look dead, but they're alive. And then I also have a little school of Zebra Danios. And everyone does fantastic. I know the might seem, seem a little unattractive that I have a bubbler stuck to the glass up front, but that's where I like it. Fantastic fish. Let's take a look at my black neon tetras. All right, here's my school of black neon tetras. 
They look awesome. Look, they have the black stripe, but they also have a, kind of a turquoise, you know, blue stripe that go across. And you can see they're all huddled together. And yeah, guppies that have uh, made it. I put the neon tetras in here with the guppies. Um, well, I like the look of them for one thing, but also they're slightly bigger than guppies, and they eat all the babies. They stop. They stop the whole baby thing from happening. Um, which I liked, you know. So, and this is another forty-gallon breeder uh, that I have. And again, see, I like, I like the bubbler up front. I don't know why. Uh, that's just where I like to put it. So let's go take a look at pea puffers. Oh, careful, people! You might fall in love. Hello, pea puffers. See how curious you are. What's this human doing? looking at me if, if you're up staring at you know your tank they're always gonna swim right up to the glass and look right back at you and yeah I did a dirted substrate here and the only plants that made it were cryptocorns all of my stem plants because they like to dig down and sleep at night in the morning when I turn the light on they would explode out and plants would come up with them so you do a kind of tape with pea puffers, stick with cryptocorns, and floaters. Uh, aren't they just cute? Oh, they eat um, snails too, which is awesome. I have multiple tanks, you know, and when you do plants, you're just going to end up with snails. It's just the way of things. These guys will eat, you know, several snails every single day. I also feed them bloodworms. They're just so curious. Look at them. See, see how they, they got this, I gotta know, what is this? Pea puffer, such a fun fish. Oh, now I'm getting drawn in, just staring at him. I better turn this off before, I, it's a 10 minute video of me just, oh, look at him. Pea puffer. I don't need my fish. Let's go pee puffer. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. And for any of the beginners who are casually strolling through YouTube looking at beginner friendly fish, if you have any questions about the ones that I've mentioned or that I've kept, please feel free to ask. There are no dumb questions. The only dumb questions are the ones not asked. Alright? So, you know, if you have something else, you know, that you're curious about involving Tetris, go ahead. Uh, and I hope you all have a fantastic day. And if you're not, if you're down in the dumps, if you're having a hard time, remember that the feeling will pass. And you'll start feeling better shortly. Get up and do something about it! Alright, catch you next time.